You know, uh, it, it is interesting, but right now, if you take a look at how Republicans intend or believe they're going to win 2022, it's, it's mind buffling, right? Because if right now, Democrats started hammering the truth on just info, infomercials like I see Republicans doing. Right now, if you turn on the TV in Washington, D.C., or if you turn on your TV elsewhere, they're talking about what Biden has done for crime, what Biden has done to create inflation, what Biden has done with all these different particular issues. And you know what you hear from Democrats? For the most part, nothing. So what they are allowing in effect is the cauterization of that message from Republicans to actually get into the psyche of people. And after you get there, it is hard for the, after believing something for three months, for four months, for six months, without a comeback, if Democrats believe they're going to come in, let's say June and July and August and start saying how wrong Republicans are, first of all, the amount of people that are going to hear that message, just hear the message, not even have to process the message, just hear the message. It's not going to be a lot because what we have right now is every day that Republicans put this message on air, every day that they send out a whole lot of emails, every day that they send out Twitter Twitter messages, that they send out Instagrams, that they send out TikToks, that they send out uh, Facebook memes. Every day that goes out consistently. They have people from all over the world that are there misinforming over and over again. And from Democrats, yeah, you have independent media like what we do. We try to create a whole lot of videos. We try to create a lot of memes. We try to create uh, uh, radio programs. We write, we, we do that, but we don't have the mass, the mass cash that let's say the DNC, the SSCC and the DSCC, the DSSSC has. We don't have that. So what do we do? We, we have, first of all, this is what I've started telling those who follow what we do. This is what I've been talking to on Medium, Substack, uh, Twitter, Tumblr. Uh, <laughs> I know you laugh when you heard Tumblr. Uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram. It's one thing. We want to elect progressives. If we want to do that, people, here's what we have to do. We cannot depend on the consultants that Democrats depend on. I've given you a, a, examples of being in, uh, being in different organizations, nonprofit organizations, where we've hired consultants and paid them $10,000, $16,000 for consultation. And <laughs> after doing that, I remember telling one of our board members, shoot, I would have taken $2,000 to give you that advice. Hell, I give you that advice for free. You just don't listen to it. But, I, you know, what I'm saying is the following. There, there, there is some madness here. And you wonder how many in the democratic uh, intelligentsia, how much of it is just uh, doing whatever it is to make a dollar as opposed to support what we know the people need, support Support, support, make sure that the right people get elected. Sometimes I even think that because Democrats as a whole are getting more progressive, that our, you know, middle of the line Democrats are willing to take a few losses to maintain that status quo, to overbalance on the right, to take care of all the good things that we really want and we have shown a lot of people want on the left. So we have all those that are misinforming. You wonder sometimes, right? So um, the, first, the first marching order here is we must be a part, those of you who are Democrats and want progressives to win, 
Yes, you have to work as a part institutionalized within the Democratic Party, but it's not enough. You have to go out there and be, you know, for those of you who are, are, are Christians or Bible readers, I remember that when, at the time that I was a Christian, I'm a humanist now, you heard that thing that said, be fishers of men. In those days, that's how they said, I mean, be fishers of people, right? We have to go out there and not individually tell the message, but also teach folks how they themselves must multiply to tell the message and get away from the minutia that we have coming. You know, recently, I, I subscribed to uh, uh, the Hartman Report, the Substack that Tom Hartman has. And, you know, he does a lot of research. He's a well-read man. He has a show, The Hartman, uh, the, the Hartman Show, the Tom Hartman Show that I, I watch whenever I get a chance. And you guys have seen me bring Tom Hartman on several times. Well, Tom Hartman put out a, a, a piece recently that I want to expand on with this dialogue that I'm having here with you. I want to show you that on, on the screen real quick. Tom Hartman came out with a piece and he titled the piece, um, let me get to the title, Why Blue State Living Makes You Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. And then his subtitle was, If You Want to Carry a Gun in Public, Earn Crap Wages, and don't care about access to health care or your kids' education, move to a red state. But get ready, because all they have left is hate and fear. And you see, hate and fear is powerful, right? Hate and fear is very powerful because it works on that animal part of your brain. And in working on that animal part of your brain, you react. You don't think first. You react. And that is what we have to get around as progressives. We have to go out there with a message that doesn't only give the mathematics, the arithmetic, the economics, the economic rules, the economic laws of the things we support. We just have to talk to people on that bread and butter level. And if we do that, we reach it. People always say, um, uh, we speak to your mind, Republicans speak to your heart. I say Republicans speak to your hate. Let's not mistake your heart with your hate. It's very important that you don't see that. But in that light, Tom Hartman brought out several topics, right? So here's what I want to do. I want to start, I'm going to start with Tom Hartman's piece, which is a great piece. Check it out. I have it indexed in the blog for the show. But Tom Hartman uh, talked about in, in there about the crime rate. We know what they did to uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson at the Supreme Court. They made her seem like in as much as her rulings were right in line with all the other Supreme Court judges, they made it look like she was loose on crime. She was weak on crime. She didn't punish crime appropriately, as if punishing crime in all phases makes sense, right? You know, smoking a bat, smoking a marijuana should, should warrant a large prison sentence, right? And throw the book at them. And... And if a kid happens to go to a website and there is pictures of naked girls and you don't necessarily know these girls are underage or whatever, but they are, and you just kind of like a kid's curiosity, keep looking at it and somehow your computer gets confiscated and those pictures are on, oh my God, what happens then? Oh, you see, you see. Those, you, you see what turns out to be, uh, oh my God, naked pictures on this kid's computer. He's a pedophile. No, he's not a pedophile. He's, he's doing what millions of young men do, right? Uh, when they're curious, they're not trying to go ahead and pick up some little girl and do something with. They're just curious, right? They're seeing this thing and the moral, the, the, the moral right comes and they attack and them to, to, at no order, they just attack, right? 
but they have kids. And I bet if their kids did something of that sort, they wouldn't want the book thrown at them, but saying, hey, that is not healthy for your mind or, 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 or that, that sort of a thing, right? But that is one of the issues. Oh, whether you have 10 pictures versus a thousand pictures. You know, a kid can go to a page that has porn on it and a thousand pictures appear in his, in his cache. For those of us who understand how, understand how the internet, how browsers work, we know that when browsers go to a page, it pulls down everything from that page, throws it into a folder, and you can do a search on your computer's cache and see all those naked pictures, whether you viewed it or not. Right? But they don't tell you that, right? It just sounds sensational. This kid had this many thousand pictures of underage kids. It could be that he didn't even go to an underage page, but because that page indexed something else, a lot of that got thrown on his computer and he doesn't know. It's just in the cache, in a storage area in a computer. There are a lot of these things nobody tells you, right? So Democrats are weak in crime and, and, and she goes ahead and she puts out, she, does, she, she uses her sense to understand, I'm not gonna destroy a 17 or 18 year old kid's life because one, of curiosity, and because two, technology. I'm not going to do that. And most judges on the circuit court, that's what they believe as well, and that's how they rule. And they made it look like she did that and that all progressives are weak on crime. Well, you know what? It's good for them to know. It's good for them to know that let's use their metrics Let's use Republican metrics on Republicans. Let's go to red states. You know what? The red state, the, here, here's, here's an article from uh, the third way, not some progressive site, just a site looking at the numbers, right? The rate of murders in the U.S. has gone up at an alarming rate, but despite a media narrative to the contrary, this is a problem that affects Republicans run cities and states as much or more than Democratic bastions. In 2020, per capita murder rates were 40% higher in states won by Donald Trump than those won by Joe Biden. Eight of the 10 states with the highest murder rates in 2020 for the Republican presidential nominee in every election this century. Again, again, it is important for that message to sink in. And you can read that piece uh, that, that's linked from Tom's report as well. But again, eight out of 10 states with the highest murder rates in 2020 voted for the Republican presidential nominee in every election this century. All right? So if we follow Republican methodology, we could easily say that Republican states are a clear and present danger to your survival. Republican states have higher murder rates. And because they have higher murder rates, it means that the policies that they institute are policies of failure, right? So here we have Republicans hitting Democrats on the crime rate, the crime wave, as they put it, even though it's nowhere close to what it was in the 70s. But they put it, they want to throw crime on Democrats. You don't see a big, huge pushback from Democrats that come out and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. The states with the highest crime rates are Republican states. The states with the most murders are Republican states. And, you know, we can draw some inferences to that. You guys have very loose gun laws, and we've been trying to have better gun laws to protect our citizens. In our blue states, we protect our citizens. They don't die as much from murder. In fact, 40% less they die than in red states. Why don't we see every time... In every market where you see a commercial blaming Democrats and progressives on crime, we should have an immediate and a fast response that says crime rates in red states are 40% higher than in blue states. What did your governor do for you lately? What did your, what did your, did your red uh, co uh, congressional state or your red 
uh, what is it the representatives do for you lately? What did your congressional delegation do for you lately? Why don't we fight back with, not, I mean, it's the facts, right? But remember what we say, Republicans talk to your heart, we talk to the mind. What about if we decided to talk to the heart and the mind? How do we talk to the heart on murder? If you live in a red state under red control and you don't start electing progressives, you are going to die. A lot of your relatives are going to die because the policies that we they promote are policies that kill. If you go to a blue state, much better because you have a less likelihood of being killed. They may bring up Baltimore. They may bring up other places. All you have to do is go into the rural areas. You see what? They don't tell you, right? They, they like to count the murder rates in big cities. But if you have a city of 10,000, you'll come Texas and find out that 10 people got shot because of easy gun laws. And they go to their, their, their rinky-dinky bar and they shoot up each other. It doesn't make a lot of national news because guess where? It's in rural areas and all the cosmopolitan reporters and, and even the Republicans themselves, they don't live in those rural areas. They just use those people in the rural areas as they close their hospitals and all of that. They don't care about those people in rural areas. They just care about their vote. And what we have to show to these people, and we need to go into the rural areas as well and show, hey, that hospitals that being closed is not because of the other. It's the other people. But anyway, let's continue with how Democrats and progressives should be out there telling the truth, right? What, what else is quite easy? You know, getting diseases, you know? They like to bring up the morality of states, right? Guess where you find chlamydia and all these different diseases? Let's go for the, 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 the five highest, huh? Alaska, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina. And you want to know the states with the lowest infections? Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Utah. So again, bad for your health. But here's the thing. Let's say you get chlamydia accidentally. You get something accidentally. Guess what about those red states as well? Guess what? Those red states don't give you health care. Right? They don't give you health care. Because again... They don't want the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act because it is bad for you. Of course it's not. What I'm trying to tell you is, Democrats, you wonder, why is it that they fail to fight the true fight? When it comes to fiscal responsibility, right? We always talk about personal responsibility, you know, that whatever happened to that, right? personal responsibility. Well, it turns out that even in that case, red states, you know, they're beggar states. They they are so fiscally irresponsible. You know, a lot of people in blue states eventually move to red states and you'll have the red state people saying, well, if those blue states are so great, why are all those people from California moving to Texas and, and, and why are they moving to Florida, these red states, right? Because these blue states people are being fiscally responsible. They earn their monies in the blue states where things they have education, health care, and all of that. And when they've amassed their capital, they have mobility, and they move to the blues, to the red states, which don't tax them anything. So in effect, they've made a good fiscal judgment. But for those people who reside in those states... The price of low taxes means closed hospitals, means poor education, means poor health care, means poor environment, means all these things that makes your, make your lives much more difficult. All these things that tear across the fabric of humanity. So what do you do then? It is time to construct the entire narrative. And how do you construct that narrative? You know, if you go into downtown Houston, downtown Dallas, and all these great places, it's beautiful. All the wealthy, upper middle class people, the rich people, have these beautiful subdivisions. And a lot of these subdivisions are outside the purview of these big cities, but the big cities support the, the ability to have those beautiful suburbs on the outside. 
And then you have the rural parts of the exurbs and all of that that progressively gets poorer. They have to fight their way into the suburbs for work or into the cities for work. Their commute times are longer. Uh, their health care is substandard. The hospitals at the far reaches of these exurbs and into the rural areas are disappearing because they cannot afford to support a smaller, more sparse population. So we have to show in places like Texas, where you know the person driving in from the rural areas come into the city and see beauty, see wealth. Then they drive back home to a closing hospitals and they say, the reason why my hospital is closing is because those folks living in the city are taking everything from us. We, and then the, the Republicans who are the ones who are instituting the policies that allow that, right? They're out there telling the rural folks, hey, you see what's happening in the city? So you have to create the story. You have to point out to these people, we want to build your hospital, but... Your Congress people don't want to charge all those wealthy people coming in from blue states and taking advantage of low taxes that hurt you, that make sure your hospital closes. That is the reason why Republicans are doing that to you. And when it comes to abortion, you know, the health care that you need to teach your kids not to go out there and do those bad things that the church it's failing at, but you can't say the church is failing at, even though the church is failing at. You can't tell them that, but you do, right? So it is imperative as you go over and over again to start telling these stories. Because if we tell, you know, Obama got, uh, people started to tease Obama about telling the story. What story are you going to tell that we have 8.5% inflation? Uh, that we have a supply chain problem? Obama, I don't know if he responded to that, but I would like to respond to that. Yeah, I would like to tell the story about the 8.5% uh, inflation as the failure of Republicans' support of policies within the private sector, the corporate structure. I would like... Republicans are always, and, and neoliberal Democrats, of course, are always given uh, 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 carte blanche to corporations. I want to let them know that inflation isn't uh, something that uh, happened out of the blue. Inflation is not there because things cost more at the back end. Inflation is there because corporations have price and power and our economic system allows them to exist and screw you and use as an excuse a war, a pandemic, and a supply chain problem, all of which they created. But Egberto, they didn't create the pandemic. Yes, they did. When Donald Trump was screwing up and lying to the American people, the corporate structure could have stepped in. They knew what was going on. They could have, they could have stepped in. They didn't. They went along with the lies. So please, I would love, I would love to be the one arguing about Inflation, I would love to be the one arguing about uh, supply chain. I've written about all of these. Inflation is not real. The shortages are not real. People are still spending and they still get the products that they want, which means the, shortage, the products are there. And guess what? Look at the bottom line of the corporations. Look at their profit margins. And see how it has skyrocketed. If the products weren't there and inflation was just there because of a shortage, the spike that you have in profits would not be there because it would mean higher prices, less products, which means this, just about the same profit. Okay? Or, or, or same amount of money, not profit. The profit still would be larger, assuming that that wasn't uh, money is coming in from the bottom of the chain all the way and price increases. So let's be clear here. Let's be very clear. Inflation, don't listen to CNBC, MSNBC, or any one of these guys that makes it look like these are just market forces. These are pricing power forces. I have a monopoly. I can price, and I will price to whatever I want to price, and that is the definition of today's inflation.
If we want to pump more oil, we can. If we want to bring more oil online, Venezuela is sitting on the largest ocean of oil, but because they have a society that won't allow corporations to just take that oil and, and have it for the benefit of the few, the way it works in America, all oil on public lands in America, guess what? Should be all of ours, which means the profits after costs should go to not only the investors, but also to the American people because it's our oil. But nope, in America, the corporation gets it all. And they pay menial taxes on that. So we need to put that as your birthright is being stolen by corporations and sanctioned by Republicans, the people that are asking for your vote. Give us your vote and we will make sure you have your school, your health care, your church, everything else you got. And we need to do that. We do that. It is carte blanche. It is victory. Folks, it is important that we understand these concepts until we learn to tell the message. And let me tell you, I'm no fool and you are no fool. If you think the rank and file democratic leadership doesn't know this, you'd be fooling yourself and you'd have to ask yourself if they even deserve to be governing if they don't know what I've just said. They do. The problem is they're fighting two battles. Corporations are the evil, the evil entities in our society. They are the ones that do whatever is necessary to justify profits for uh, parasites that just buy stocks and sit at their pool and do nothing. You know, whenever I hear that word, uh, we have our, our, our I, don't, I don't work. My money works for me. That is a definition of abstracted slavery. Because if your money works for you, it means you are sitting at your pool sipping tea while the profits that you make on your money comes from somebody else that is working on your behalf. And you are taking a big cut of what that other person is working for. No, it doesn't. It's not how you are taught it's enough. It, we've taught not to think like that. Capitalism has taught us to be selfish and at the same time being selfish, thinking that we're being honorable. You're not. We are not. And I am saying we too because, yes, I probably have some sort of little bit of investment or whatever, who knows, in, in some, some, something. Right? So we have to understand these concepts, people. We have to understand these concepts. And when we do, when we do, then things will change. When we go out there and tell the message and do not depend on the democratic, the leadership of the Democratic Party and all their ancillary and institutions to do the job, you are going to have to do the job one person at a time, five persons at a time, but not only one and five. 10 for persons at a time, but you have to teach them how to do exactly what you are doing as well. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.